Welcome to episode 4 of Tamo's Turbo Talk Time Stereo Podcast. Episode 4. That's a 4, I guess. The end is nigh. Um, the year is over. <laughs> and um, I really don't give a shit. Uh, New Year's is another weird holiday that I really don't care much about. I don't want to be... Um, Pissing on anyone's parade, I guess. <laughs> Just not very excited about that. Then again, fun stuff should be coming up in 2020. And um, as we're closing up the year, I thought I'll um, talk a couple things um, that have been occupying my thoughts in the past couple of weeks. And also about a couple of things that I've watched, listened to. You know the drill. I hope. The first topic I want to talk about is, and it has been sitting with me for a while, and I've been ranting about this before, but I really want to get to the bottom of it for myself a little bit. And maybe it's interesting to you guys too. So, is there a difference between creation of media and creation of art nowadays? And let's get a bit more specific, and I want to bring it to into more or less the field I'm in, photography and videography or photo and film or how you want to categorize it. Um, the question is, is what we're putting out on a day-to-day -day basis, not everyone, but what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis in social media, the, the amount of content that's being put out which is very likable or easy to like and it's it's nice to look at and it's very algorithmically uh, <laughs> um, sculpted to most people's liking. Is that art and is catering to that being artistic? What makes a difference or is there a difference or does it even matter whether there's a difference between those or not? Is intent still important or is it just perception the defining factor, right? Is wanting to be an artist enough to be one or does there need to be a thought process behind whatever you do or whatever, right? Those are difficult questions and they have been asked for a long, long time and we're, I think there will never be consensus on what a definitive answer can be probably. But I'm wondering, to be, or to be really specific, in terms of like Instagram and YouTube and algorithms and all that bullshit. My question is, when you cater to an algorithm, are you still producing art? Or are you, well, just producing to get back to my initial question? And I don't want to sound petty or bitter or I, I'm really interested in getting getting answers for myself basically right because for me the feeling always has been just do whatever you like to do and hope that you find enough people who like what you do and that you grow as an artist whatever that means and get to a point where you can attract more and more people in not only liking your work, um, but enjoying your work and getting something out of your work. And that's where uh, it gets really difficult for me to determine between, yeah, is it art or is it not art? And is it important that whether it is art or not? For me, I've gotten to a point where I think it is important to 
produce more art than just to produce and also to know the difference somehow. <laughs> Be because if the I don't know I don't want to believe that the final say in that is an algorithm that basically on the on the one hand just works on how many eyes and likes you get on something but also through those eyes and likes promotes whatever you do even more so that number goes up which is kind of weird i mean i get it and it works as a business model <laughs> apparently um and luckily i was able so far at least to keep any kind of business dealings out of that necessity to have big numbers on social media and so on and so on because I was very lazy just really giving a shit about that because it never seemed to be that important until it was and then you're kind of lagging behind and that's why I'm saying like I don't want to sound petty and it's not out of at least I hope it's not out of a position of feeling left out because i really don't think it is i mean it would be nice to have like millions and millions of followers or fans somewhere um but i really don't think it would change anything for me besides making it probably more stressful and that's why i'm getting there is a lot of the big social media stars you see go through those phases where they like kind of burned out or where they change everything or where they just step back from everything completely or where everything becomes more a chore if they're not like super careful and depending on how much they really put into it and if they have anything else besides what they're doing and probably it's easier when you're doing like tech reviews or something and i don't want to play anything down i mean Look at MKBHD. You can't get much bigger than him, right? Especially when it comes to tech reviews and stuff. When you're working in an artistic field, right? Where you're taking pictures of something. Whatever the theme or topic may be or whatever your genre of photography is. And the business is built on producing more and more likes and followers and fans and people who interact with your work but the amount of or whatever the number is the number just gets bigger if you produce more and more just don't get to a point where you can take a step back have a look at your work and then maybe change something or grow or but you're just trying to get the numbers up without having the time to process really what you're doing does that make any sense if you're just trying to like companies work right you're just trying to get bigger and bigger instead of seeing what the natural progression of your artistic journey probably would be and it's interesting to me because or it's probably in my it's been in my mind for a while now because I feel like I'm at a crossroads right now where I'm trying to go from what I've been... I mean, there's never a straight line, right? But on whatever path I've been on so far, we're at a point now where there's another intersection where you have to decide where to go. Do you keep on going straight or do you turn left or right or wherever, right? I really don't want to come from a place where I'm the underdog or I feel like I'm the underdog or I feel like anybody owes me anything because I really don't. Because I know why I'm at whatever numbers I am on whatever social media platform. And it's all, well, not deliberately low, but... It has been a deliberate choice of not pursuing big numbers. At least it was for a while, for a long time. Because I always thought 
the concentration on the work and whatever it is, the artistic journey would be more important. And I'm still not sure if that is true or not. And I'm not saying people who do the other are big or have big numbers or are super, super um, successful on social media are not artists. But I'm wondering where's the where's the thin red line <laughs> where you cross over where it gets weird. And most probably it's something where it's as personal as so many other things in life where it really depends on what you do just or where it's just on you and yourself to determine that and that's probably something where i have to get to a point where i can define that for myself and i haven't yet and that's probably the biggest the biggest part of that right i really just want to understand is there for example no other choice than to have this success on social media to be a successful artist or is there still a chance of that not being the only way or the right way or anyway anyway no that doesn't work anyway you know what i mean <laughs> which also comes directly back to the point i talked a couple of weeks ago about where I just don't see how for Instagram profiles that are filled with different photos that all look the same have any value to anyone. Not the people who shoot what they do, nor the people who look at what they those people are posting. But I might be wrong. It's still, or I'm way too old. Also a very good possibility. But yeah, then again, everyone should do whatever they want to do and i keep saying that because i really really mean it um and yeah i might yeah it's something that still needs to develop in my head i guess anyways so much for that let's uh let's get a bit more um light <laughs> i guess <laughs> um so i haven't posted any updates anywhere i think on my last two picture frames i made they turned out really nice i think i'm still i still need to get more lumber which i haven't yet but i've got a great tip for a good lumber yard where i can get more wood um but between the holidays and between christmas and new year's everything here was basically uh most places were uh, closed and yeah i've been I'm waiting for the new year to start so i can get more stuff uh, and have a talk with the people there and see what types of lumber um, they would suggest and what they have and this and that and because i really want to get my hands on some walnut also but it's been it's been a fun experience even though it's it's been a very short time and i haven't made like tons and tons of frames yet but it's nice to see where all this is going and that there is already a learning curve for me and I'm glad that my instincts on how to go about the whole thing were correct so far <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm very very excited to keep on pushing and a couple of friends of mine gave me a couple nice tips on how to maybe modify the frames a little bit further or what to try out to see what techniques to try out to see where i could probably take the whole thing and i think in the end i mean right now i want to keep on working on this one type of picture frame for all my photos for now but i'm sure there will be different kinds in the end right or as we go along um one thing that's for sure i definitely need to get more experience on the wood working part for sure and also get to know the types of woods i'm working with because already with those three different types of wood uh, that i've been using they all react differently especially also to the uh weather conditions because my uh, the one part of my workshop the biggest part isn't uh, really heated or anything and when it got colder it's interesting to see how yeah 
I mean, not that I didn't know that, but I wasn't sure how it really would affect the wood that was already like cut and oiled and blah, blah. So that's really interesting. Also finishes is going to be a very interesting thing because I've only used this one type of oil to finish the finish the frame so far. Sorry about the noise outside. It's still quite early in the evening while, when I'm recording this. Um, and I shouldn't have. <laughs> then again, as I said, I have a little cold right now and uh, yeah, I get quite tired in the evenings. I'm very, very excited uh, for what's to come. And I think I might be giving away at least one photo completely fully framed with one of my handmade frames soon. And by that point, we should also be like at a point where I can produce, um, yeah, frames like on a regular basis. Let's see how that goes. Should be should be a good good time. Besides that, when it comes to making, I have been very very lucky that my sweetheart's brother took the time over the Christmas days and taught me welding a little bit. So I spent a full day in his workshop, and we started with some basics. And damn it, I can't even remember if it was. I can't remember which exact type of welding it was, but we started with one where you just have like the gun thingy um, and started working on some metal pieces. And uh, from that, we went to another type of welding. <laughs> I should, really should have looked that up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, we have like the two parts and use both your hands. And that was a bit more complicated, but in general, it was really interesting to see that there's a the, the learning cur curve was much steeper than I thought. And I think if I had like a couple more days uh, in a row where I could like train myself a little bit more, it would come even easier. Not that it's easy or that you get like nice welding uh, lines, but that was a lot of fun. And funny enough, we started, I don't know, he was asking me if there was anything I wanted to do or try out. And then... I remember um, watching couple makers I really like um, doing like different sculptures and this and that. And I thought the easiest that would come up to my <laughs> would I would come up with was uh, doing a cube or a dice, right? So without much thinking, we just started doing, and uh, obviously he helped me out with it and. It went really well though, which was so much fun to see this thing come together and then have these six parts and they just melt together. <laughs> and I can't remember exactly how long it took. I mean, it was there like a whole day, but it was at least like five, six hours till we finished the thing uh, up. And I will link up a couple of photos or put a couple of photos in there um in the notes and in the description for the video and that was really amazing to see this thing come together and become this solid piece of metal which was i mean that was really experience i have been looking forward to for years now i've been wanting to try my hands on welding for such a long time that this was so 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 fulfilling um I think it turned out really well. I mean, weld everything together, then started grinding and cleaning the cube up. And I have a couple of nice ideas. I haven't decided yet on whether I want to acid etch it or laser etch it or just paint it. But we're definitely, I'm definitely going to think of something cool doing that. And talking about painting, another thing I really want to try my hands on very soon, uh, I started looking at some uh, cheap and quick ways to get into that is airbrushing. As I have been, uh, as I have been finishing my, or working on my Millennium Falcon um, Bandai Gunpla model, um, I realized a 
airbrush would be really, really helpful there. Not that a couple of my friends didn't tell me that, but um, yeah, sometimes I take a while to process stuff, so. <laughs> and I've looked at so many videos now of people uh, reviewing uh, beginner airbrush uh, sets and guns and or uh, brushes and techniques and this and that. And the good thing is it wouldn't just be for like doing like models and stuff, but also, and also depending on what kind of airbrush you use, um, you can use it for like painting and uh, doing like bigger models or like picture frames. And um, if you get the right makeup colors, like you can use it to do like makeup on like uh, human models <laughs> for like photo shoots and stuff. So there are a lot of applications I could use that in um, having that skill. And um, yeah, I'm... I'm very close to ordering some stuff and trying trying my luck with my Millennium Falcon for now. I mean, besides being a big Star Wars fan, the Millennium Falcon has always been one of my top spaceships or spaceship concepts of, uh, yeah, of all of them out there. I've always been a big fan of the USS Defiant, by the way. If anyone is interested and <laughs> you haven't stopped listening yet, <laughs> Uh, I actually don't know if there's a nice um, model of the USS Defined out there, but that, I don't know. That was really one of the other su superbly cool designs for a spaceship, for a small spaceship. While we're talking about Star Wars, I wanted to get to one thing that's been, that I've been wondering about. <sighs> I remember growing up, Star Wars was this mystical thing, right? That everyone liked, everyone loved. And while growing older and coming to, into my teens and twin, twins, twins, coming into my teens and growing older and <laughs> whatever, right, being in school, um, it wasn't really popular to be a Star Wars fan. But within that group of sci-fi and Star Wars fans and geeks, Star Wars was always up there, right? There wasn't much critiquing of Star Wars. The only thing I can remember friends of mine saying like it hasn't aged that well. <laughs> and we're talking about episode uh, 4, 5 and 6. When episode 1 came out, I remember everything started to change a little bit because first of all, new generations of Star Wars fans um, were getting to experience their first Star Wars film. And the a whole bunch of old fans were confronted with something they were idolizing for such a long time and then getting something they hadn't expected or didn't really enjoy as much as they remembered enjoying the old stuff. That already brought up kind of a weird divide, right? Between Star Wars fans or sci-fi fans or whatever and now with this third trilogy it's kind of expanded even more and as times have developed and more people how to say better knowledge about films and have watched more and more films and also more and more people nowadays really like to be very vocal about their opinion and I've been, I want to preface this by saying, I've been someone who's been very, very, very vocal about not liking and hating stuff and hating about on people's work um, in the past. And I've been trying to change that for a while now. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to be very diplomatic here. Um, and... I mean, already after The Force Awakens, a lot of people didn't like it and it was a rehash of blah, blah, and you hope and this and that. And then The Last Jedi came, or, uh, came around, people went completely bonkers. Um, and now with The Last Skywalker, The Last, The Rise of Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker, right? Sorry. Again, people are going completely apeshit. And 
I'm wondering if it wouldn't be better for everyone to just relax a little bit, take a step back, take a deep breath, and just realize these are just films. And believe me, I'm, and I know everyone and their mother says that, but I've been a Star Wars fan since I've been, I don't know, three, four, or something like that. Going to kindergarten, I remember having the toys and playing around and watching the movies and all that. And I've never lost my love for Star Wars and my fandom. Not even with episodes one, uh, one two, and three. Um, and I might come back to that and say like why I don't like or like one of those films, but I'm probably not going to uh, do that today. But my point is, with whatever critique you might have story-wise for those films, I think every single filmmaker who made these movies always tried to do or to produce the best movie they ever could. And different people have different opinions. And I know a lot of people are like, ooh, Kathleen Kennedy and Disney and Bob Iger, and they just want to make money. And of course they want to make money. So did George Lucas and so does any other filmmaker out there who has a movie out in the cinema, <laughs> wants to make money, right? That's the whole point. I mean, not the whole point, but it is a business after all. And I really don't believe that people want to do stuff out of spite. And it's so funny because before the rise of Skywalker, everyone hated so much on Ryan Johnson. And now that a lot of people are not very happy with the rise of Skywalker. Everyone's going back to The Last Jedi and it's like, oh, Ryan Johnson, why didn't he do the last movie and why is he not doing another this and that and blah, 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 which is super funny because I, I personally, I really love The uh, Last Jedi. I think it's the most interesting out of the three. Um, and I think The Rise of Skywalker is a fun film and I enjoyed it a lot, actually but it's probably not the best Star Wars film ever. My question here is, does it have to be? Is it important whether it is the best film or not out of the three trilogies we have? Very popular opinion probably is that Empire is the best film out of those nine movies, and I will s stick, to my <laughs> stick to my opinion. Um, I know a lot of people have that or see it that way too. Others say it's a new hope, blah, blah, or Star Wars actually. Um, and it really, really doesn't matter because in the end, you really should just be happy that we're in a time where we get these movies and get this content and get Mandalorian, which had a fantastic first season, by the way. The final episode of season one was just so freaking cool. And so well done. And I think they are really the most exciting Star Wars thing that's going on right now. Um, and has been for a while. And I really can't wait to see what else is coming out. The amount, the amount of hatred and negativity that is brought towards... Yeah, how to say? Towards those people who bring you the things you should thought you'd love <laughs> is kind of disturbing and it's the same with the Irishman or Marvel movies or whatever the heck's coming out if they're like I get it that there's the perception that a lot of people do not respect a lot of those IPs as much as you do as a fan and when you just look at the news that they're already uh, reshooting uh, or they want to remake Battlestar Galactica again already and like ugh, think of something else I mean look at the expanse they came out of nowhere and they're killing it I mean season four of the expanse might be one of the best sci-fi tv series seasons ever and the expanse is just up there I mean it's I'm sure it's not I mean I know it's not easy to produce a series like that and to write a series like that. But 
remaking something and then having the amount of success that you had before and sure the last series uh, Battlestar series was a remake too but there was so much more time between those two um, TV shows and I don't know it's kind of weird but anyway the point I'm trying to come to, uh, to get to is I get that it sometimes feels like people like JJ Abrams and Kevin Kennedy and let's say Bob Iger and so on do not care about the IPs as much as you do I think they do also understand that they cannot just produce bullshit just to make money because that works for a while but to be honest a movie is not going to make a billion dollars just on luck and good faith or blind blind uh, i don't know consumers and uh, viewers and if any of those films do not fit your taste 100 percent, that's totally fine they don't have to but i think it's also important to see that a lot of effort went in there right and i get it it's kind of weird that rose spoiler alert by the way uh for the rise of skywalker um that rose was in the film for like a minute or something but then again she wasn't that exciting as a uh, of a character to begin with and she was kind of the sidekick of finn who already didn't have that much going on the whole series to be honest i feel like finn could have had so much more i don't know impact on the whole thing and so many more important scenes but that's a different problem that's a filmmaking problem in the end i guess um which also plays into that and i get the critiques for example that there should have been a more coherent red line i guess through the whole trilogy to keep everything a bit more together um and i don't know how to how they could have achieved that especially um that uh, or thinking about that the third film should have actually been directed by god sake what's his name the guy who did jurassic world and i think that would have been the better choice in the end i know there were some political things going on and um i think then wasn't there some me too stuff going on with him anyways i'm just saying like besides that stuff it would have been nice to see what would have come out of that instead of going back to jj which i mean some argue isn't the best filmmaker or a really good filmmaker anyway so yeah but i'm saying like even knowing all of that i still still enjoyed the experience of sitting in the cinema there and seeing those people you've experienced over such a long time in this universe you've been a fan of for such a long time i think some people just need to let go because you can sit there and watch the godfather and you can watch apocalypse now and whatever amazing movie you can think of you can sit there and dissect it and just shit on it it really doesn't matter I don't think there's one movie you can't. You probably could do that with uh, Miyazaki movies. I'm not saying you should. Please, just don't. Just let it go. I don't know if there's any point to it and if it's just a thing that's... <sighs> generational? I don't know if it's just the times we're in right now. But, I mean, I remember how it was when episode 1, 2 and 3 came out. People went apeshit too, but I think the online was a different thing than it is now <laughs> um but i also think we really need to have more understanding of things we shit on and we also have to bring more understanding to the table when we discuss stuff very passionately and it's nice to feel passionate about something right and it's sometimes nice to f to be in opposition to something just for the fact of being in opposition to something but having that as a general rule is kind of weird and 
fuck other people and other people's uh, feelings just for yourself. It is much nicer, much better for your self, for your inner self to go to a film and be able to enjoy it besides of a couple of plot holes and maybe you don't, didn't want some people to kiss and some people to do this and there, 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 there. But I mean, there are people out there who sit in a f fucking movie that Roger Deakins shot and start discussing the lens choices. The only thing I have to say to that is fuck you, you fucking cunts. And that also kind of ties back into what I was talking about before, about art and all that, but I'm getting carried away here. I've been talking way too long uh, anyways already, but I don't know. I felt like I have to let that out a little bit. But if you ask me and if you haven't watched it yet, and I've only watched it once so far, and I will definitely uh, try and go see it soon again, as long as it's still in the cinema, um, Rise of Skywalker was great. I think it's a nice trilogy. And I still think that The Last Jedi is my favorite one, but I haven't watched rewatched uh, Rise of Skywalker enough times to be really sure. Um, and as I said before, it doesn't really, really matter. Just go in there, take a sweetheart, take your family, take your kids, whatever, and have a jolly good time. Because it's a fun movie. And sometimes it's enough for films to be just fun because for the audience you should go in there and just enjoy whatever it is you're watching then again there are films that should not be enjoyable <laughs> here but that's a that's a different different story altogether watchmen i've said that last week or last episode i think is definitely one of the most amazing tv shows ever and it's politically and thematically so important and correct for these times and while still being super fun and one thing i would say is if you haven't watched it yet but you know the graphic novel you there's there shouldn't be anything happening between now and you starting to watch watchmen if you haven't read the graphic novel, you should definitely try and get a copy, get a whatever, digitally, uh, physically, whatever you like. Give it a read and then start watching. Because I think even though the series works without having read the graphic novel, it definitely will enhance your viewing experience. <laughs> yeah, tenfold for sure. It's, it's, it's going to give you so much more enjoyment out of that but it also works if you read it afterwards and maybe then rewatch it or whatever but besides the political and thematical importance of regarding our society nowadays and especially like american history there's been so much attention to detail in this series it is mind-blowing and also a good tip is um HBO put out a podcast with Damon Lindelhoff, who is the executive producer and head writer for the Watchmen series. And Craig Mason, who also wrote Chernobyl and a lot of other stuff and does another great podcast called Script Notes with John August, but that's besides the point. They have done the what official Watchmen podcast, which you definitely should listen to after you watch the series. Um, there are just three episodes because there are only nine episodes of the series. Um, and they have done one podcast episode for each three of the TV show. And they are wonderful. And they give you a nice look behind the curtain and the thought process behind, behind the whole TV show and an idea of, yeah, there's a chance for a second season or not because... The way this ends, it, it's so beautifully done. It could just end here and most probably just should end here. And But you never know, right? And it's, it's yeah, definitely give it a go. We also finished watching His Dark Materials, as I talked bef uh, about before. That ended really nicely and was a beautiful and really strong season for this show. Um, I didn't expect that 
at all. I really loved the movie they did a couple years ago with Nicole Kidman and um, uh, Daniel Craig. I really don't understand. I mean, sure, it wasn't like a big success at the box office, apparently, of some weird reason. Then one of the m most wonderful things that I watched was The Witcher series on Netflix. I've been such a huge fan of The Witcher 3 since the game came out and I played. Um, I think The Witcher 3 is... No, I don't think... I know The Witcher 3 is one of the most fantastic games ever. And it's very high up on any kind of top list for games you could think of. Definitely up there with um, Mass Effect 2, which has been my favorite game of all time for a very, very long time. Um, and Netflix has done a great job. I was kind of nervous uh, when I heard that they tried to stick more to the books and um, deliberately get away from the games a little bit because the author of the books and the game company had kind of a quarrel or something some kind of bullshit going on whatever it is and that's why they kept away from leaning more on the game or doing a nice combo of everything but i think they managed well because i mean to be fair not many people would have known about the books without the games and I think it was just last week that I read that the author of the books and the game company actually have a new agreement where everyone is now happy and everyone is getting enough money and blah blah and that there will be more Witcher stuff coming which is also officially then um, supported by the author of the books and I haven't read the books to be honest I haven't played Witcher 1 or Witcher 2 the series really delivered on everything that I really wanted from that series to bring me, right? The feeling was just right and the characters were really nicely portrayed, uh, portrayed and if you haven't watched it yet, another tip for me, definitely, I think you can invest the time and get a lot of enjoyment out of that. I, I'm wondering, because the second season is already booked, I really hope they give them a little bit more budget for special effects because those were a bit more TV-ish, I'd say. But it doesn't really hurt the experience. I mean, if it stays like that, it stays like that. I'd rather have them uh, invest in the story than special effects. But if there's a little bit of, you know, <laughs> wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Sorry about the bells. It's, yeah. I will talk about this next week because... I've talked too much uh, in this episode already, but I just want to briefly mention how much I enjoy my Oculus Quest. Besides being a Facebook product, I know, I know, I've been a big uh, opponent of everything Facebook-ish, even though I'm on Instagram, which doesn't make any sense, I know. But anyways, um, and we'll talk about this more and more, but I started playing Wrecked RX, I think. Is it Wrecked RX? Let me have a look here quickly. It is Wrecked Annex. Um, I've been a big fan of um, Vader Immortal, of course, and um, Super Hot VR, and Beat Saber, and there's this boxing game that is great and all that. And I will get back to those and talk a little bit about those next week then. But Wrecked Annex has been a lot of fun. I mean, you really have to like turn around the whole time and so on. And it's so much fun. Um, and also, funny enough, this week or last week, or I don't know, a, I tried it out last week, the last time, um, Beat Saber also brought out a couple uh, 360 degrees levels. Poo! Those are tough. I mean, on easy they're good, but everything else, you really have to concentrate. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good challenge. Uh, good challenge. And I wouldn't have thought that they could make Beat Saber any better, but they really did. And it's. It's a wonderful experience. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you'll have a fantastic New Year's Eve. If this is your New Year's that you're celebrating. If not, have a great week. <laughs> and um, I will see you in 2020. Hopefully we're all well, well motivated. And um, 
if you have any feedback for me, please let me know. I would love to hear feedback and know what I can do better or um, more. Um, especially, as, uh, I mean, this is mainly an audio format uh, or supposed to be consumed as an audio format, even though I put out a video with it every week on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Um, but I don't know, maybe it helps if I put up some screenshots of stuff or um, stuff like that. I will definitely try and link everything up I've talked about in the show notes or in the uh, below the video. Um, but yeah, maybe there's probably a lot of things I'm not thinking about and I'm sure there's a lot of things I can improve and I will try for sure. Um, until then, thank you very much. Adios, cowboy.